Alright, so this is one day later. And it looks like all the diesel is still there. No drops here anywhere. This is just the tank that I put here that I was gonna try to uh, suck the diesel back into it, but I have to raise this even higher somehow. Um, but yeah, this is a really great test. Um, diesel does not evaporate in normal conditions. So, there you go. Perfect way to test pretty much anything for cracks and leakage. So I'm gonna remove this rocker cover and uh, I'm gonna change the seal in here so I took this um, this is actually also a pulley to remove the steering wheel so um, hooked it up like this with some long bolts and then we're gonna see how it goes alright so as I tighten this the cam rotates not good so we need to stick something here in between and uh, I don't know so I'll be back alright so we popped off this pulley you, someone needs to uh, stick something in here and get like an extension or something and push this side and it'll just crank and pop and this is the Pumpa Doza Medusa system as you can see the injectors are internal they are pushed by the cams by the cam lobes The cam, uh, the lobes on the cams, um, they're not like, there's a, I can give you a picture of a really good one. They're nice and smooth. They're not like, they don't have angles in them. Although this thing has an angle. You go and then there's, oh, there's an angle right here. Which I think is factory. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to check. Yeah, there's an angle on this one too. The one in between. The one that pushes the the injector nozzle and sprays the diesel. But the thing is on the Jettas and the Golfs and the Beetles, the 1.9 liter engine, this is the same camshaft and this camshaft wears it wears off and it's a pretty frequent job to replace it but my uncle told me that on these Passats they don't and uh, my question is right now is how do I check the lifters how do I how do I see if the lifters are in good shape or not because it's really difficult to get access to them besides the little funky sound that the engine made uh, it wasn't ticking or clicking or any matter of fact this one actually worked quieter than my friend's car my friend's car sounded more ticky and more like diesel-y that diesel sound, especially when you rev the engine. Well, um, yeah. But right now, we gotta figure out how to take this off. I think you could just pick it.
inspection. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. The best part about this is that it has its own little, it can go only one way in. It's uh, like that. And uh, everything looks clean. So the next uh, procedure that I'm going to be doing is I'll be removing this air box and I'm going to be removing the intake manifold so I can clean it. If I remove the intake manifold, it'll be much easier to clean all that crap right there. And then I'll install the rocker cover back on. Then I'll install this junk. And uh, I'll also check the play on the turbo on the turbine inside to see if it moves around. That is okay. That's a good amount of play for a hundred and seventy eight thousand tur turbine and um, a little bit of oil dripping when you pull this out, especially on the lower hoses, is completely fine. If you pull it out and there's like a huge puddle, then that's bad. But this is fine. This is not fine. Definitely not fine. So people that don't change their air filters, at least blow them out with an air blower if you're too cheap to change the air filter. Because this is not acceptable. So the guy that uh, welded the piece from the outside, I managed to run into him and uh, told him my situation that, you know, it's still leaking and um, decided to uh, have him weld it from the inside and uh, he gave it a shot. Gave it a shot with this uh, cast aluminum. And he welded it from the inside. He also did a little bit from the outside again. <clears throat> but I am um, checking it for leaks now. Same procedure that I did for the oil pan. Have it a little bit tilted where the diesel does not reach the top. And I'm going to leave it overnight and see, um, you know, so far so good. Crossing my fingers. This right here is uh, the spill that I accidentally made when I was pouring it in here from the side. Carefully, I was carefully pouring it in here. But um, it was still dripping down my, I have it like I have some diesel in a little bottle and I'm just... I was pouring in, it's coming down the bottle. But um, from this side right here, just get a little lower there. From this side right here, all that looks really dry. There you go, you can see it. All very, very dry. And uh, since this piece is so important, cause it has a crack. <laughs> I'm going to test it twice. It is seven in the morning 
and that diesel looks like it's still there doesn't look like any marks besides that one let's take it out hey, look at that nothing there except that which I wonder and since it's so close to this we're gonna have to uh, do this test one more time here we are test number two let's see and that is all the junk that was right here I'm wondering though I was laying like like this the leak was right there this is the spot and this is where the weld is and this is the spot you know this crack couldn't have got somehow like this all the way like you know and just like there would have been a stain from here to at least there or on the back but there's no way like it would have got inside there go through all of that and end up just like straight up in the middle up here not like on the side or anything but straight up in the middle you know what this looks like this looks like this right here I just emptied it out and it spilt and it spilt last time and um, this is just the problem with diesel is that you can't ever get it clean enough but the test that I did passed both times and it didn't leak from the spot that it was supposed to leak so thank god this worked All right, I'm going to be checking both of these sides again um, I'm I have high hopes for this side and hopefully here as well we're gonna put the once we put this on we're gonna put the sprocket on and we're gonna see like you know if it if it actually goes in between this piece which I don't think it will I think there's a little like a gap or something we'll see we'll see how it goes this um, coolant heater or exhaust cooler works both ways um, came off easily pretty bolts and take off this uh, pipe that goes there and then another pipe down there and uh, you don't even need to disconnect it you can have it like that next would be uh, removing the bolts and taking it out before I left, I was reading how to take this thing off, and someone said, you don't even need to clean these things because they don't get clogged. Well, let me tell you, my friend. That definitely looks like it needs to be cleaned. I don't even think this works when it opens. This will be thrown in the dishwasher. I'll just scrape whatever I can before throwing it in there. But this, man, I want to throw this in the dishwasher. But there's an electronic part to this. So I'm going to have to do it by hand. Alright guys. So I took off the rockers. You know, these black things. That push the injectors. Um, 
And then, I start taking off these bolts right here. These two. Because it looked like they were holding that. And you know, this is all covered with oil. It definitely looks like it. So, uh, I took them out and I started pulling them out. And the freaking bolt is like this long. And also, I was like, oh shoot. This must be the head bolt. So, um, I gotta screw this back in. And, uh, you're actually supposed to screw a little baby bolt inside of there. Um, but, once again, check your lobes. This is a perfect time to check your lobes. There you go. You know, it looks... It looks weird. But they both feel the same. I think for uh, the mileage that this car has, I think this is fine. I think the only time you actually need to change these is when you get a check engine light. That tells you to do that. Um, <clears throat> there's a pretty hard uh, to pretty hard way to inspect inspect the lifters. This is probably as best of an inspection as you'll get. To see uh, that they're not cracked, because I don't want to remove this cam. Um, something I didn't like is uh, you see how this is all nice, and then this is a little bit more shinier than the rest. It's actually uh, a little bit more shinier because it has some kind of wear. You know, I'm not too sure why is it only in this piece versus on the whole thing. Maybe somebody installed this wrong or didn't push it all the way. But anyway, um, maybe if you guys can comment and let me know what this really is, uh, that'd be nice. But, um, I think that's all right. So, next step would be to actually put all this back together and uh, then uh, put the seal in. Because uh, I'm using this uh, type of seal that uh, requires the area to be nice and dry. So I cleaned it as much as I could. I'm gonna put everything back in, spray it with some um, brake cleaner, wait till it dries and then shove the thing in there. And then I'm gonna get the, uh, the valve cover gasket or rocker cover gasket, whatever. I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna uh, seal the deal. Cause now it's really easy. You see the uh, manifold's out of the way. That was really easy to clean it. You know, so I have put the rocker cover back on, sealed it, put the rocker cover gasket, a brand new one, put silicone, a little dab from the inside when you put the the seal inside of the grooves on all the way around and then I put a good portion you see it's sticking out sticking out in some areas quite good I put a, I put a pretty good portion from the uh, from the outside so when it sits they can squeeze through all the holes and I tighten it by hand alright let's see how the dishwasher is doing
any day now. It looks definitely cleaner. Let's see. It's freaking hot though. There's some dirt, but it's definitely cleaner. This could be easily scraped off, but from the inside it looks it looks nice. So we're gonna let it let it leave for a little bit. Leave it for a little bit longer. I'm uh, thinking how else can I set this up though? This is the weird. This is the complicated part, so I'm gonna set this up in a way that it would work. Like that, so it shoots it straight. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, I have yet run into another pickle in this modification. So, as some of you might have noticed, I had the wrong pickup tube. Or if you didn't, then I did. You know why? Because I just tried to put this oil pan on and uh, it was hitting like, you know, in this area. Or maybe even here. The oil, the oil pump assembly is like, this prock is obviously on this side, it kind of like extends up to here. The tube comes all the way and like hit something here. So, it wasn't coming on and I did some research and realized that the Passat and the Audis have this type of an oil pan and they all both look, uh, uh, they all use a small, like a snub nose type of a pickup tube. And um, all of the Jettas and all of the um, Golfs and all, all of those, you know, sideways engines, they all use the same pump with the same long pickup tube, which is, you're most likely to get that long pickup tube but not the little one, because uh, it's less common. So, <coughs> so um, I looked it up on Wardpack, it's like 30 bucks and uh, for that little piece of thing. So, since uh, I have all these uh, great welders out here, I just decided, uh, you know, to modify this piece a little bit. Um, make it uh, shorter all right so I tightened the uh, I tightened the sprocket to the with the crankshaft bowl I just tightened it by hand and uh, it is really really close like it's insanely close. Like there's literally like millimeters in there. And you can tell that it's rubbing. You can tell that it's rubbing right there. I honestly at this point since that is aluminum and this is metal I would not mind if this metal 
shaves off that aluminum the distance that it needs. So, I put back the intake manifold with uh, the water heater or exhaust cooler thingamajig. And uh, the hardest part about, well, before all that, I put these pieces back together. Um, the hardest part is actually making sure this metal gasket stays there stays on these uh on the holes <clears throat> so it's good to catch one back there somewhere and put her in and then get one over here and then start slowly putting them all in because if you put one over here it's difficult it's more difficult to try to move uh this metal piece and catch it there while it's doing vice versa where you put it back there and then screw it in so this is a uh, bolt that sucks putting back in I'm pretty sure I broke the thread doesn't matter I have two holding and this thing is it doesn't need much uh, let me see all of these bolts I screw them all everything by hand um, make sure not to damage any of these pipes down here plastic pipes um, before pulling the bolts in it's best to take this rubber boot completely off and shove it in there and so you're putting everything this way and this will also go in that way you'll have to align this too because before I just had it disconnected in here to take it off it's easier to just pull this metal you see that metal that goes around? It's right there actually. You pull on that metal um, clip and then you can like kind of pull everything out this way. So, but to put it back, you can't do that. You have to actually slide this in there and then put this on with some uh, pliers or something. Anyway, everything looking good. Uh, just got my uh, little pipe, little pickup tube, and and this is what it looks like after the modification. I believe it's even shorter than what I'm supposed to have, but I'm not complaining. It works. I gave it some pressure, and uh, it didn't. Uh, didn't hear anything coming out so this definitely is sealed it's real nice to, he didn't even try but I guess he uh, he sealed it though anyway we're gonna put this on uh, I'm gonna take care of this wire business right here There's like a lot of metal showing on these wires. It looks like some dog chewed us up while I was gone. Now I'm just kidding. It wears out just like that. So I need to uh, dig a little bit deeper in here and uh, slice these wires in half and put uh, shrink tubing and I have to clean these wires. I have to do a little procedure on this for the long run. Anyway, and then I'm going to put the air filter box back on so that I can start doing the timing because I really want to get that timing going and just start the car up with no water you put the oil back in there with no water just start the car and listen to it see if it's good because I don't want to put everything back together and then the timing's off so <laughs> you know Alright, so I kind of put this in just to show you guys that now with this oil pan, they should slide in all the way. There you go. Slides in all the way.
all the bolts line up. Everything's great. <clears throat> See? Right there. <clears throat> Much better than it was before. Before I couldn't even put it like that. Anyway, this is how uh, tiny is supposed to look like. As you can see, mine is actually bent it down just a little bit because they had to do that for the weld. And since it's bent it down just a little bit, it actually um, is closer to the bottom. So, there you are. All right, so I have put the air box together. Uh, connected it back to the turbo. Fixed my little wiring situation. And uh, the next step would be um, I'm debating whether I should do the timing belt or put the oil pan on. And I think I'm going to put the oil pan on first just to make sure it fits properly. All right, so I have put back the oil pan. It's sitting here nice and snug. The, this bolt was pretty difficult to put in, but uh, because I wasn't using a swivel bracket, I was just trying to screw it in. I think it went in wrong and messed up the thread a little bit. The rest were fine. These bolts went in nice and easy. These bolts right here were kind of difficult to put in, but as I kept screwing them, they became easier and easier. Um, I set the timing belt. I set the timing belt. The way I did it was, <clears throat> I put this sprocket on, and this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has an odd number amount of teeth, meaning that there's going to be one in the middle by itself. So you set the one in the middle in that hole, and then when you turn it, you're supposed to put uh, this supposed to be up here. And then one of these guys are going to be in this area and there's actually a little hole there on the other side and you can put a Allen wrench in there. With this facing up there, there's going to be an Allen wrench that you could put in there. And um, down here, I put this on so you could hold uh, the belt so it doesn't slip off because uh, I had a little Integra which had the belt keep slipping off for some reason and I realized because I didn't have this. But... Um, once again, I was able to put my tool in there, and with that tool, uh, the little uh, <clears throat> arrow was not pointing straight. The little arrow was pointing a little bit to the side. So, with that in mind, I uh, put her on here first, made sure there's tension here. This wasn't there. Uh, this was all the way loose. Put her there, and then I just pulled everything this way, and and uh, put it on top of that. So this probably moved somewhat. This probably moved somewhat, but it didn't skip anything. Then I tightened this part, and I inserted this. Well, actually, I inserted this first, and then I tightened this part. And um, we're gonna see how it goes, guys. This is gonna be the moment of truth, right here. So my little technique 
to hold the transmission fluid didn't work. The thing slipped off. All right, so we have made a little modification here to hold this together. You're gonna be test number two. Look at all those guys, they're just watching. Got nothing else to do. I'm not gonna touch that. There it is. There's a water sign. There's no water in there. Battery because the other thing is not on. And that sound that you guys keep hearing. It's not a knocking. Hundred. It's it's uh. It's like. It's like uh, the suspension that's underneath there. <sighs> Why? Because this is only holding on to um, rear uh, transmission mounts and this thing ah. and that's it so it's not, it's not suspension suspension on the wheels well, those are just mounts cross member whatever yeah. smart ass right here so this was probably the sound that you heard yep just gotta connect this back together and I think I'll be good thank alright so I have put back the fancy cover that covers the timing belt. This little piece right here. Before doing all that, I actually uh, wanted to make sure that there was oil pressure. Yeah, okay, this is a good time to check for oil pressure before I start putting everything back together. Now I know that the oil pressure is not going to be uh, reasonably tolerable, but I just want to see if there was oil pressure or not. So there's actually this is your this is your oil filter right there. That thing goes down and down there is a sending unit. It just reads to see if there's oil or not. So your car doesn't actually doesn't actually read pressure. You can't access a block using VCDS. You can't do that to see what how much pressure there is. You actually have to physically hook up a little hose and then put a gauge on it and see how much PSI it is. Uh, after doing that a couple times, the engine was hot enough warm enough where the remaining water that was inside of the block started coming out that was the last time I did the test because that pretty much told me that it's getting pretty hot in there and uh, the readings were uh, 50 psi at idle and it didn't go over 90 while revving and when it was at three and a half rpm uh, it while it was at two and a half rpm it actually uh, stayed at 70, but it slowly dropped. Like over the interval of five seconds or seven seconds of holding the RPM, it slowly dropped. So meaning that the uh, the oil release valve is working in the pump that I put in there. But I'm still gonna. I still have this in there, just because after I put the radiators and everything on. I need to warm up the engine and actually see what is my oil pressure at idle. So that's going to be the big one. But it is actually good to see if there is actually oil pressure or not. Just to at least be sure that the hole we plugged was actually the right hole that needed to be plugged. Alright, so the car is off the engine hoist. I have put the suspension back in place, a uh, total of 8 bolts, 
I just use the gun, an impact gun, to tighten them to a good, good torque. Also, I replaced the, both engine mount, front engine mounts, and uh, tighten all those little bolts that go there too. Um, you have to pretty much pry up this subframe until the longest bolt is able to screw in by hand. So you screw all of them in by hand. Before that though, you have to uh, actually tighten this all the way by hand. As you can see, I still need to tighten these guys. Um, but other than that, you do these first, tighten them by hand, then it should be a little bit easier to align these long bolts. Once you get those long bolts in, then you can get these other two and then you kind of start screwing them all a little bit by a little bit so the whole suspend, uh, subframe rises uh, evenly. Uh, right here, you got to make sure this is going in properly because there's these two little notches in there that should fall in place and so, and so is here. This has its own little notch, too. That thing right there. On both sides. Well, this, this, is, this piece is covering it, but anyway, uh, you gotta make sure that's both the line before you finally torque everything together. And uh, if your engine is, uh, if your engine is too high up, I would recommend it you know, uh, undoing the chain just like one link and putting it down just a little bit, but not where it's resting on the uh, subframe already, where it's just a little bit up, just a little bit above, but not too high. So the next step will be to get the radiator support back on and to get a water in my, in my system. So uh, then I can actually test uh, the oil pressure operating temperature which is actually uh, how it needs to be done properly and since uh, this is a mod I really want to be reassured that the oil pressure is legit even though I actually I've never tested for oil pressure it was my first time doing it it seemed fairly easy all right dude all right so a quick little side note is uh, that little bubble right there would probably be in your way when you're doing all this work, especially when you have to take this off. It's behind it. So I don't know if uh, you're gonna do that, but I put it to the side. But when putting it back, I was actually trying to figure out where, I, where to put it in here, because it could per perfectly be in this area as well. Like you can make your own mounts for it. Like on this frame, you can literally put this thing in there. But, um, since this has a little uh, shield, you know, that's where I ended up closer to the turbo. And realized that you actually need to put it on this piece right here. Because, you know, you forget after all this stuff, you kind of forget where the little things go. And uh, I would advise you to put that before putting on the radiator support. So, make sure to do that. Alright. So, I am back to where I started. Except, the oil pump has been changed. The mod's complete. I tried to uh, warm up the car, but... Since, since I didn't drive it, I'm not, uh, cause there's a car behind me, but since, you know, I didn't drive it and it didn't warm up all the way and this radiator is just open like that and this fan just keeps spinning and spinning and cooling it down, I was only able to warm it up maybe to like, I don't know, uh, 
a quarter way, a little bit past quarter way, but not half like it's supposed to be. Oil pressure test check. And um, at idle, I had 30 psi. And uh, when uh, a buddy of mine floored the engine, it never exceeded uh, 85. And so that's fine, but that still doesn't completely do the test. I'm gonna have to do it again once I put everything back together and have it warmed up. I, from what I can say, the car does sound better without the balance shaft. When you have it like this, there's no vibrations. You can feel the engine increasing in RPM and somewhere about somewhere about right there you can feel like a little little shakes but as you go higher it doesn't ma doesn't matter nothing happens from what I can say is that when you give it gas when you give it gas it like it just, you know, the RPM rises really fast. Before, it wouldn't rise as fast. Check it out. You don't hear anything. You don't see any black smoke, which is great. Um, where's that pipe at? So we're here, huh? Alright, let's do it again. Yeah. That's fine. It's a beautiful day here today, here in Sacramento. Got a little bit of rain finally. But we're going to see how this Passat sound goes. Car is cold. The way it started it last time. Now this window open. I don't have the bumper put back all the way. I just have it on these main bolts right here. Just in case I need to take it off again. I don't have any of the engine covers on either, any of these plastics, because uh, I'm gonna be power washing this engine, and uh, so I can, you know, determine where the leaks are coming from. But uh, you can't hear that same sound that there was before.
There's a high pitch sound that's coming from this area, but it comes on and it comes off. So I believe that has something to do with the EGR or maybe the throttle body, I don't know. But uh, it's not like a shika 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 sound like you heard before. Alright, here we go. So we got the pressure gauge hooked up to the sending unit from the oil filter. We got it to this PSI gauge right here. The engine is warm, nice and warmed up. And we're going to see how it performs. Start the engine please. Alright, so, as you can see, it is nice and warmed up, perhaps just a smidge lower, but that's because I believe that this car has never had the thermostat changed, and I think it kind of tweaks out because in the morning, it can't stay warm, and uh, at idle, there it is at idle it's above above 25 psi Let's get a little better zoom for you above 25 psi can you please hold 2000 rpm please so as you can see at 2000 rpm Juggling between 75. Go, please. As you can see, it was juggling between 75, meaning that pressure is stable and that the release valve is somewhat working. And the last test we're gonna do is to see if it uh, goes to over 100 because 100 is the maximum. And I'll have her floor the engine. Floor the engine, please. Alright, as you saw, it didn't go over 85, which means the pressure release valve is working. And this leads to the conclusion of my modification. With very good results with the oil pressure one thing I'll tell you right now is I should have done is uh, it would actually would have been a risk because uh, I tried not to drive the car when I realized these uh, this problem existed and when I read all the forms and everything and all the horror stories I realized that I shouldn't drive this car but um, um, the risk that I should have taken is unscrewing, doing this check that I just did, doing this uh, oil pressure check before the modification. 
So that would have been nice if I did that. But other than that, comment, subscribe, and uh, let me know what you think.